finding John's Gospel in your Bible. John's Gospel. John chapter number 8. John chapter number 8. Well, we all need the Lord Jesus. Amen. John chapter number 8. I want to speak to you this morning on this subject. Let freedom ring. Let freedom ring. You stand in honor and reverence to the reading of God's inspired, inerrant, infallible word. Beginning in verse number 31. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him. That's important. If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. They answered him, We be Abraham's seed, and were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? And Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin. And the servant abides not in the house forever, but the son abides ever. If the son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free Indeed, let freedom ring. Thank you, you may be seated. May God add his blessings to the reading and preaching of his word. I've told you probably before about uh, the three little boys who were talking about their daddies. And you know how little boys can be. They uh, always like to talk about whose daddy can beat up whose daddy, whose daddy's better uh, than whose daddy, who, whose daddy makes more money than the other daddy. Well, there were three little boys and they were waxing eloquent about the excellencies of their fathers. And one of those little boys, he said, Well, my daddy's a great professor. When he talks about a subject, only ten people in the entire world can understand him. And there's a second little boy said, Well, my daddy's a great brain surgeon. And when he's talking about surgery, there are only five people in the whole wide world that can even realize or understand what he is saying. Well, the third little boy, he puffed out his chest and he said well guess what my daddy is a great preacher and when he's preaching nobody in the whole wide world can understand what he's saying <laughs> well in the latter part of John chapter 8 we're confronted with a son whom the Bible declares was born of heaven Jesus Christ is the only begotten son of God and he's also God in the flesh so when Jesus Christ was here on this earth and Jesus spoke about his father, you can absolutely know that Jesus was speaking with accuracy. Jesus spoke with integrity. Jesus spoke with truth when he spoke about his father. And so if that be the case, and certainly it is the case, you and I need to hear and heed what the Son says about the father. We need to understand what it was Jesus Christ taught about His Father in heaven. Now, did you know that, that Jesus could have rightly been the supreme leader and ruler of this world at His birth? I'm telling you, that moment He was born, He could have usurped the authority over the entire creation that He created. But in the sovereignty and plan of God... Jesus came the first time not to rule over this world with an iron fist, but to redeem this world by His death on the cross. Now, I want to make a statement to you, and I want you to think about this statement. The Son of God, the Lord Jesus Christ, invites all men to step into the light. What the Bible calls the light. Actually, it's His light. You see... A man apart from the Lord Jesus Christ, a person who is not a Christian, is walking and groping in darkness, the Bible says. The Bible says that this world system is darkness. And so uh, the Son of God invites all men to step into the light. He gives them an invitation not only to light, but He also gives them an invitation to life. An invitation to forgiveness. An invitation to salvation. However, rather than receiving this life-changing, eternity-altering offer, 
The people of Christ's day, and I will say the people largely in our day, they vehemently rejected the invitation of Almighty God. And so the people of that day, they had no respect for the Son of God. As a matter of fact, they would rather crucify him like a criminal on a cross instead of crown him as king. And that hostility right there is clearly seen in the text that we're going to share from this morning. We will see that Jesus, he absolutely meets this hostility toward himself. He meets it head on. As a matter of fact, and, and this is not politically correct, the, the, the world and a lot of churches today don't like to mention this, but uh, in the context of what we're reading today, little meek and mild Jesus, he calls this crowd a bunch of liars. And he calls them children of the devil. Now, please hear Psalm verse number or chapter number two and verse twelve. The psalmist said, Kiss the son lest he be angry, and ye perish from the way when his wrath is kindled but a little. We don't hear much uh, speaking of the Lord Jesus Christ like that in our day. We always want the lovey-dovey. We want, you know, the feel-good Jesus. But I'm telling you, Jesus Christ was also uh, a man of wrath. He was also a man of righteous indignation. He was a man of anger as well. Now, how you respond to the only Son that can save you is eternally serious. It is an eternally serious matter. So I want you to think deeply on that truth. I, I want us this morning to think deeply about Jesus Christ and the claims that Christ makes in the gospel. You say, preacher, why do we need to think so intently on that? I'll tell you why. It's because your true freedom, your true freedom is delivered by Jesus Christ. Jesus alone can give you true freedom. Did you know that you can live in the land of the free and the home of the brave and still be shackled, still be captive, still be a slave? But I'm telling you, you could live in the United States of America that was occupied by a communist nation. You could be in a concentration camp. You could be bound in shackles in a cell somewhere under a, a foreign regime. But you could still be as free as any man on the face of the earth if you're free in Jesus Christ. If you know Christ as your personal Savior. So Jesus alone gives true freedom. Freedom from sin shackles. Freedom from sin's destruction. Freedom from the devil's lies. John informs us in verse 30 that, listen, notice that, that some there that day believed the truth he was preaching in the temple. And his response to those that believed are found in verses 31 and 32. Notice again what Christ says. He says, if ye continue in my word, now that's key. If you continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Listen, listen. You don't just nod your head to Jesus. You don't just uh, raise your hand or sign a commitment card in approval of Jesus. No, sir. A true disciple, a genuine convert, a genuine disciple continues or remains in His Word. I was watching TV yesterday or I was, in and, I was dozing in and off and I, uh, one time, I don't know if I woke up or what was going on, but I, one of those crazy Medea movies was on. I told her earlier, that is a crazy, crazy woman. Or man, however you want to look at it. But it was the one about the Halloween. It was a Halloween, my dear. I, uh, and uh, I was watching it yesterday afternoon, and where I picked it up was she was in church. She was in, in the sanctuary like this. There were people on the pews, and, and uh, she was down front. She said she'd been being chased by demons and all that stuff. You've seen the movie. You know what was going on. But... Uh, uh, the, there was a lady down there talking to her and, and, and Medea kept saying, I need to get saved, I need to get saved and, and uh, in all, the only way that she could. But uh, the lady said, well, all you got to do is believe. You just got to pray and believe and, and, and Medea prayed and she believed and then she asked that woman, said, am I saved, am I saved? And the woman said, yes, you saved. And she said, I'm saved, Lord. Now listen to me, it, it was funny 
But that does not constitute salvation. It would be seen. And this is just an illustration about Medea. You get that, don't you? True genuine conversion would be evidenced by how she lived her life from that moment on. So we need to be careful about easy believism in our day. You see, when a converted man gets into the Word and searches out the truth of Christ's teaching, they continue in it. They remain in it. What am I saying? I'm saying they live it. They obey it according to the Lord Jesus Christ. So the truth of who Jesus is and the truth of what He can do dawns on them like a ray of light from the sun. And the result is true freedom in Jesus. Now here's the application for you and me. There's a promise here, but there's also a challenge in Christ's words. So the question, the question is, do I believe enough in Jesus to stay with Him and His Word? Until I'm truly free. Now, most of us can answer that this morning fairly easy. But as we see in this text, and some of you may be even thinking this right now, as we see in this text, not, ev not everybody thinks they need liberty. Not everybody thinks they need freedom. They don't believe that they are a captive. And so there's a couple of things that, that we need to understand from Christ's teaching this morning. Number one, in verse, number, thir in verse uh, number 34, Jesus plainly teaches that we are slaves in need of freedom. We're slaves in need of freedom. Look at verse 34 again. John chapter 8, Jesus answered them. Now here it is, Verily, verily, I say unto you, whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin. So those that were there that day, the squirming started in that crowd when Jesus started talking about freedom. Because if he's suggesting that they needed freedom, then it presupposed that some of them were currently in some kind of captivity or bondage or slavery. And so the question comes from the people, if you keep reading, Jesus, why do we need to be free? We're Abraham's descendants. We're a special people. We're not slaves to anybody. Never mind the fact that they were currently under Roman rule. Never mind the fact they'd been slaves to several other nations prior to this. Listen, Jesus here is specific. He's not talking about political slavery. He's not talking politics right here. He's talking about spiritual slavery. You know, the average American today, even the church member today, would think the same way when I'm up here preaching about captivity or when I'm up here preaching about how we need freedom. The average church member, the average American today say, what in the world is he preaching about? We're not in captivity. We're not bound. I'm telling you this morning, everybody look at me. If you are apart from Jesus Christ, either in salvation or you're in a backslidden condition, you are a slave to something. You're not a free man. So, so the question was, why do we need to be free? Well, here's Christ's answer in verse 34. It's very plain and simple. Jesus says, Whosoever committeth sin is the servant. Now, he's talking about a continual action, habitual act of lifestyle. Whoever's living in sin is the servant of sin. Now, underline that word servant. It is literally the word slave. Jesus says if we're continually living in sin, we are a slave to sin. We live in sin. There's no repentance. Listen, people do that because they are bound by their sin. They're helpless. They're captive. They are a slave to it. You know, and we'll see this this week. We're very much a patriotic people today in America. The Jews were the same way. They were very much a patriotic people uh, uh, concerning Israel. And, and today we boast of our liberty and we boast of our freedom. But listen, there are multiplied millions in the land of the free today who are slaves. They are in captivity. Listen, young people, they are bound by the very vices they believe will give them freedom. 
There may be some here this morning. And you're captive, but you're not willing to admit it. There are many people you talk to every day who like to boast that they're living as they please and doing what they want to do, yet in reality they are living in the bondage of their sinful desires. They're no more free than a dog in a pen. They may run around like they're having a good time, but they are hopelessly trapped. There's some of you in here this morning who, like the Jews of that day, you are laughing at the notion that you're a slave to anything. But that maybe there's somebody in here today who knows deep down that you are bound with shackles you can't shake off. That's why, teenager, listen to me. That's why you, you can't be happy without a boyfriend or girlfriend. You're addicted to dating. You're addicted to, to uh, attention and affection from the opposite sex because you're not totally and completely surrendered to Jesus Christ, whom the Bible says is the lover of your soul. You can't make it a day without viewing illicit content on your iPhone or your iPad or your computer. It's why you look good on Sunday, yet, let, yet you live in rebellion uh, against your parents day after day. You're not totally surrendered to Jesus. You know what happens? Uh, that that uh, uh, non-surrender in your life to Christ, it evidences itself, it reveals itself in those actions that I just talked about. You're bound, you're a slave to sin because you're not captive to Jesus. That's why, sir, you can't abstain from some of those vices. You can't let go of that pornography. And an addiction to sports, recreation, and, and hobbies. It's why you can't get past the, the intellectual aspect of trying to analyze everything that, that is what we call faith. Hey, you can't analyze Christianity. You can't analyze Jesus Christ any more than you can completely understand the physics and the molecular makeup of gravity or electricity. Listen, it's because that you're not captive to Him that you're a slave to everything else. That's why, man, you're jealous and you're conniving. You're discontent all the time. You're a busybody. It's because you're not completely surrendered to Jesus. You're, you're a slave to everything else. It all comes down to surrender. Understand that this morning. It comes down to surrender and salvation. If you're in here today and you want to be saved from your sins, you want to die and go to heaven, you know what you have to do this morning? You have to come to Jesus and you have to surrender your life, every part of it, to Him in faith and in repentance. It comes down to surrendering your Christianity. If you want to be in right relationship with Almighty God and you want to live a victorious, joyful Christian life, then you must come to Him and you must surrender every aspect of who you are to Him. It's the only way you live. In joy. It's the great paradox of Christianity. You surrender to become a captive of Jesus Christ. It's a paradox. Greatest freedom you'll ever know is when you become bound by Christ. Young people, when I was a teenager, I thought I knew it all. I was arrogant. I was proud. I was boastful. I was hard to live with. You can ask my brother. I thought I knew everything. Some of you uh, parents and some of you adults can identify. Say amen. I thought my mom and daddy were the biggest party poopers on the planet. I didn't mean to alliterate right there. <laughs> I thought they were the biggest joy zappers that ever walked. A curfew? Man, you got to be kidding me. A dress code? Really? My mama and I, we fought over what I was going to wear to school up until she finally threw up her flag of surrender and said, go to school like you want to. I'm not fighting anymore. Dating rules and regulations? Get out of town. Lectures about friends? Places to be and places you shouldn't be. Whatever. 
My attitude was just get me out of this house. I know what's best for me. Let me get out on my own. Let me go down there to Clemson University. Have my own life. I will show them. I want you to look at me and listen to me tonight, this morning, young people. The problem was not my parents. The problem was not my preacher. The problem was not my teacher or any other authority figure in my life. My problem was me. I was a slave to popularity. I was a slave to being the life of the party. I was a slave of, of making sure the, the attention was on me. I had to be the center of attention. And so I, I, I was a slave to, to alcohol and rebellion and dishonesty and drugs and disrespect toward my parents. Why? Because I was not surrendered to Jesus. I had no freedom in my life. I look back on that and I was a miserable person. And it, and it led to a whole lot of heartache. Amen, adults? You'll never know happiness and freedom until you become a slave to Jesus Christ. And His plan and His purpose for your life. We are slaves in need of freedom. Hey, you, you come to Jesus and give your life, your soul, your all to Him this morning and then let freedom ring in your heart today. And then there's a second thing and I'm done. We need a Savior to give us that freedom. We're slaves in need of freedom, no doubt, but we need a Savior that can give us that freedom. You see, freedom is not just offered by anybody and freedom can't be given by just anybody. Notice verse 35. Jesus said, and the servant abides not in the house forever, but the son abides ever. The Jews argued, hey, we're not slaves to anybody. And Jesus countered, oh yes, you are. You are sin's slave. You're living in habitual sin. And then he provides them with hope in verse 35. The slave abides not in the house forever, but the son abideth ever. A slave is just a servant. Now listen, a slave has no family rights. A slave can be sold. He certainly can be told what to do. A slave can be traded. A slave can even be sent away. That's why Jesus declared if the son, the son that abides in the house, if the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. So here's what Christ was saying. As a slave, you can't free yourself, but I am the Son, and I have authority to free you. I have the authority to let you go, not just partially, not just legally, but fully and truly free you. You see, the sinner says this. The sinner says, I can quit whenever I want to. When I'm ready, I'll stop. I'll stop what's doing wrong and I'll do right. Hey, listen to me. He's fooling himself. I've seen it too many times. Been in bondage too long. He belongs to his master. And I want you to hear what I'm about to say. I'm going to repeat it in just a minute. He belongs to his master by this time because he's been living in sin. He can't quit when he wants to. I did a funeral of a, of a man several a uh, couple of months ago. And just before he died, he had drove himself to the doctor's office and went down and sat with a nurse and said, Please, help me. I can't quit what I'm doing. Listen. The slave master does not cut you loose just because you don't like the weight of the chains anymore. You see, I've never met one alcoholic who said, boy, I love being bound by this alcohol. I, I love waking up with the shakes and, and going through uh, seizures. I, 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 love, I love having to have a drink by 10 o'clock in the morning. I just love that. I love being bound by this alcohol. I've never heard an alcoholic say that to me. I've never met one drug addict who said, boy, I love going through withdrawals. I love stealing from my mama. Man, I love stealing from my grandpa. I, I just love it. I, I, I love living in paranoia of the police. I've never had one teenager, not one teenager has ever said to me, I love being a parent at 15 years of age. 
I love having this sexually transmitted disease and I love all the consequences that go with it. Not one teenager has ever said that to me. I've never met one man in jail who said to me, I love being in this cell. I love being behind those bars. I love going to bed at night scared out of my wits if I'm going to get raped or if I'm going to be beat to death. I've never had one person tell me, boy, I'm glad I lied to my wife. I sure am glad I lied to my husband and my children and went ahead and had that affair. Not once. But I have had plenty of them tell me this. Listen to me. I've had plenty of folks tell me when they were getting started down that road, I've had them say, Preacher, you don't know what you're talking about. This one time won't hurt. It's just a little fun. I'm just blowing off a little steam. I've had plenty to say, Preacher Stewart. I can quit when I want to. I just don't want to quit right now. I've had even more say, Preacher, I wish I'd have listened to you. Now I can't quit. And even sadder still are those that will call me or come by here share their story with me. Say, preacher, could, could the church loan me or give me $50 to get my medicine? I've spent all my money on booze and prostitutes and drugs. And listen, when they're asking me for $50 to buy their medicine, you know what their medicine is that they're going to spend that 50 bucks on? Booze. Drugs, prostitutes. Most of the time. Hear me again. The slave master doesn't cut you loose just because you don't like the weight of the chains anymore. A lot of times, he just makes them heavier. There's but one answer, and that's total surrender to Jesus Christ. The gospel says there is a son who is really Lord over all the house. You can never free yourself, but He can, and He will free you. Now in verses 31 and 32, that's where I I took my title from, Let Freedom Ring. The truth shall set you free. Verses 34 through 36, Jesus clarifies that previous statement a little more. You see, it's one thing to believe that Jesus can set you free from the patterns of sin. It's quite another to experience that freedom in your daily life. I've learned most of us have difficulty in the action stage of belief. That that vital link between knowing by intellect and then uh, knowing by experience. Listen to me. You are saved by faith alone in Jesus Christ. But that does not mean that you jump immediately into a full understanding of your faith. Matter of fact, man, I'm learning more about my faith every single day. Our personal response to Christ's commands... Listen, listen. Our personal response to Christ's commands in the Word of God determines whether we will be able to live in the joys of salvation with the freedom and exhilaration of learning to say no to daily sin. It all depends on what you do with His Word. A man in prison, the judge can can give him a signed pardon, he can receive a signed pardon, the warden can walk down the hallway of the jail, open his jail cell door, let him out, but listen, to listen, listen, in order for him to be free, he's got to receive that pardon from the judge, and he's got to put one step, one foot in front of the other, and step out of that prison cell, before he's truly free. Two thousand years ago, Jesus came to conquer the enemy that holds you, and he can make you truly free this morning, if you'll put one foot in front of the other, and come to him. Some of you need to come to him this morning, in salvation, you need to be saved, but there are others of you in here today, you've been saved, but you're not surrendered. You need to come waving that white flag saying, Jesus, I surrender to you today. What can you do in order to begin living in the freedom Jesus purchased for you on the cross? Listen to me. 
There's no secret formula for discovering the riches of Christ's truth. If you want to live in freedom that has already been purchased for you by Christ, here's what you do. You want to live in freedom. You simply submit yourself to Him. You come under His authority. And you obey Him in every area of your life. If I could sum up the Christian life in a couple of words, it would be obedience and surrender. Obedience, do what He says. If you'll simply obey Him, you will live in freedom and liberty. Listen to it. Look at me. You don't have to die in your sins and go to hell. You don't have to be bound by the shackles of sin today. You don't have to live in slavery today to your hurts, to your hang-ups, to your hopelessness, to your fear and restlessness. A million times no today. Listen, this morning you can come and you can fall at the feet of Jesus today and you can bring Him your soul, you can bring your life to Him, your dreams to Him, your shackles to Him, and you can cry out, Lord, set me free this morning. And then you can get up off your knees today and you can let freedom ring in your heart and life. Hallelujah. Amen. I was looking this morning. I said, Lord, I, I want to close with a song, a, a hymn. What, what can I close with? And here's what He gave me. Once like a bird in prison I dwelt. No freedom from my sorrow I felt. Then Jesus came and listened to me. And glory to God, He set me free. <laughs> now I'm climbing higher each day. Darkness of night has drifted away. My feet are planted on higher ground. And glory to God, I'm homeward bound. Somebody needs to sing this. Now I don't know who wrote it, but somebody, somebody needs to sing it here at Blue Ridge View. Uh, goodbye to sin and things that confound None of this world shall turn me around. Daily I'm working, I'm praying to, and glory to God, I'm going through. Now, now, He set me free. Yes, He set me free. He broke the bonds of prison for me. I'm glory bound, my Jesus to see. For glory to God, He set me free. Hey, let freedom ring in your life today. Amen? Heads are bowed and eyes are closed.